BHP New Zealand Steel Mining Relocation Project. Taharoa, situated on the remote and rugged North Island West Coast, bounded by the Tasman Sea. Major structures included a 1,000 ton wet plant, 500 ton surge bin, and a 250 ton dredge. The project involved picking up and relocating the complete mining plant, three kilometres north of the existing location. BHP reviewed various options to relocate, and in May 2000, Transcar Heavy Haulage were awarded the contract. This included responsibility for all site works and subcontracting involved. The project logistics were complex, involving intensive planning, major site works, highway construction and bridge strengthening. Site test drilling to 8 metres was required over the designated roadway to ensure ground stability. For the purpose-built highway, 10,000 cubic metres of crushed metal aggregate was used and tipped over pre-compressed sand to form the road surface. The haul route also required increasing the size and strengthening the Wainui Bridge. This included building a massive 14 metre wide concrete slab and driving 250 UB piles down each side, supported by sand backfill and timber piles. There was no environmental impact throughout the project. Mining operations continued during the building of the dry docks and other haul route developments. As local ground material was non-cohesive, construction of the southern dry dock included building 1.3 metre high support buns using cement stabilised sandbags with a plastic geogrid around each layer. The pavement between used layers of compacted cement and crushed aggregate. Over a four-month period, using their own workshop facilities, Transcar refurbished their multi-axle trailers into as-new reliability. Mobilisation to site of all heavy haul equipment involved a 300 kilometre journey, often over rough terrain and winding roads. Ship loading operations carried on uninterrupted while site construction activities continued. Due to its width, the dredge required an alternative docking system and Transcar used elephant stools with supporting steel beams. At the same time, similar construction of the northern dry dock progressed. Hall route access preparation included removing gantry conveyors, building sections and high tension lines. A 300 metre canal was constructed to float the plant into the dismantling pond. An 80 tonne crane assisted the crew with the disassembly of smaller components. Following the flooding of the dry dock, the bunded wall was breached with the dredge and surge bin floated in. The dry dock was pumped out with the bund wall reinstated after the plant was positioned using inflatable craft and bulldozer winches. The dredge transportation involved two double wide Cometo trailers, one 20 axle line and a 14 axle line.
With transverse beams elevated, hydraulic pressures were closely monitored, bearing in mind the cantilevered front cutter exceeded the weight of the rear pontoons. On the initial gradient, five prime movers were used, consisting of four Mach 500 horsepower and a 525 horsepower Mercedes. As the loads had to enter the northern dry dock in the reverse order, the dredge was moved to a lay-by standing area. Here the stool supports were relayed and the dredge lowered onto them. Daily safety and site meetings were held throughout the project. Wind speed often reached high velocity, tempered with driving rain, blowing sand and greasy surface areas, creating adverse and difficult working conditions. The trailers were steered according to the rod linkage. Here, the line of bogies at mid-trailer length were fixed with the front bogies linked to steer in one direction, while those behind steered the opposite. This minimized road width requirements on corners. Okay, now uh, straighten the front. Space between trailers was maintained by in-situ welding steel plate lugs to counteract any variance in tracking. Fore and aft restraint utilized cross chains and tensioners. Trailer configuration for the surge bin was similar to the first move, using 34 axle lines. Gross train weight on this haul exceeded 750 tonnes. All prime movers featured torque converters driving to power shift or manual transmissions through to tandem drive axles with diff locks and cross locks. The journey down the ramp to the northern dry dock was controlled by the prime movers. The load was elevated by the trailer's own hydraulic lifting system. It was then accurately positioned on the buns, the dry dock flooded and floated off. The southern dock was again flooded, equalizing the bund wall pressure, and the wet plant was floated through and positioned. The dock was then pumped dry prior to the loadout. The wet plant size and weight required a triple wide trailer configuration, consisting of 48 axle lines, rolling 384 wheels beneath the load. On loadout day, harsh conditions. Following 24 hours of high rainfall greeted the haul crew. Steel plate was laid out on each side approaching the dock to assist with wheel loading. The five prime movers, ballasted to 40 tons each, used all their horsepower for this massive move. With a gross train weight of 1,500 tons, this load created a New Zealand record. Measured crosswise to the roadway, this gap was narrower than the load's width. To finally gain clearance, the load was backed up to accentuate trailer swing. Crossing the bridge required three minimum radius turns in both directions in close succession.
Following the pumping of the dry dock, the load was moved down the entry ramp with manual steering from the trailer's own hydraulic control panels and accurately positioned on the dock buttons. The successful reinstatement of the plant, within budget and on time, reflected the close cooperation between BHP and Transcar with their attention to safety and precise planning resulting in a low problem, high productivity project.